Hi, this is David with Haggerty in our Redline Rebuild series. Today, Ben and I are going to talk about the Model A rebuild. So, what do we got today? Talk about that. Um, well, you said it. We got our model. <laughs> we got our Model A, uh, but we're doing basically what we always do. Um, although we have gotten into the rhythm of providing the Redline updates, where you guys are definitely more aware of what's going on with these projects, so it's just been fun for us. Uh, but this is just a time where we kind of really detailed get into what you did, um, how we built it, issues that we ran into, things that we learned, and that sort of thing. Um, we know you guys will be commenting throughout this, and we know that you'll probably have questions about some of the stuff that we talk about. We're going to do a Q&A session at the very end, so you just hold your questions, any questions that you have, until then. Um, we're actually, we have the Model A over there, we'll start it up. Guys will get to hear it again, um, and we'll answer some questions then. But for now, Man, we'll jump that into was, it. That was nice. You did a nice job. All right. <clears throat> so, and also, before we get started, if you guys like this stuff, and you like the videos that we do, and you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. Yeah. There should be a little box down below here somewhere where you're watching to subscribe. So yep. please do that. So before you roll that, so this Model A is our Swap the Street build of, of 2016. It is a 1930 chassis, which includes the engine and transmission and such. And the body is a 1931 Murray body. There's been some discussion of, hey, that's not a 30, it's a 31. Well, you're partially correct. So we're gonna call it a 3031 or just a 30 or maybe a 31. But at the end of the day, it, that's it the definition. Averages the to engine 30 is a 30. 5. So it's a 30 and a half. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, <laughs> so the biggest problem with this engine is it leaks like crazy because it's whooped. This was time lapse, but it was like a five minute time lapse. <laughs> yeah, it was really short. Uh, and that was only after running it for this. Yeah, this. We did a couple donuts in the parking lot. <clears throat> Which is a little... lot of fun, by the way. <laughs> I'd highly recommend it. Had a little fun. And then mm -hmm. it came in and spewed its guts all over the yep. shop floor. Oh, you look like you're having a good old time there. It was. It was look fun. That, look at that it's a lot of fun. Look at that smile. <laughs> So, yep, roll her, roll her in the shop, and you can already see the pool of fluid dumping. Yeah, you got the oil dry under, yeah. under there, soaking it all up. Yeah. All right, so a little bit different than any of the other engines that we pulled out of things in that it's a more open. Except for that stupid bumpers in the front right in the way. You complained about that the whole the time. The whole time, yes. I've fixed that now. <clears throat> so yeah, just straightforward, get everything out of the way. Now the trick with a Model A is you can't drop the transmission separately at all. You have to basically pull the tranny with the, with the engine. The floor boards literally pull out of it. You can see everything's wide open. Um, and and it, you do have to obviously take the, the shifter out of the way because it will not come out. That's why this is done and the emergency brake. Um, the pedals in hindsight I could have taken off here. Uh, oh, I oh, actually I did do that. I was thinking I left them on because remember we fought that a little bit. But yep. uh, back to our uh, serpentine belt pulling method. Which everyone still working well. Every, every time there's a comment, what are you using the serpentine belt for? Yep. Because <laughs> they work. And away goes the car. A little more oil dripping out. Um, so it, this is a, a completely stock Model A. This is the stock uh, flywheel, a clutch plate, and um, pressure plate. And they are safety wired in. And it's ridiculously heavy, actually. <laughs> they have a bolt-on bell housing mm -hmm. uh, that is separate you know, from everything else, meaning lots of times your bell housing and your transmission are one piece. No power tools allowed, man. What's the deal? Uh, there was no good way to get that off otherwise. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the glory of it right there. It's ugly. That, the head on this at this point is the stock compression head as well, which we remedy. Right. I still love the uh, open wired <laughs> spark plug wires. Yeah. I've it's amazing to me that that's just, A, that it works, and B, that like, that's just, that's just what it was. Yeah. 
Don't put your hands here. Yep. Oh, look at that. A little, little, little trickery. Bolt came off itself. <laughs> People have been super digging all the little stop motion stuff that we do. And while it takes us a, a good bit longer to get that stuff done, we we like doing it and we know that it yeah. looks cool and, and we, we're glad that people notice it and enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. Valve train. Uh, was there, I mean, with the oil, I mean, the oil leak, you knew where it was coming from, but, but as far as having driven it back from Hershey and all that other stuff, was there any other things as you were taking it apart that you were interested in looking at? Because we had never had this engine apart. We just had it yeah it was, yeah was i mean we was. had it apart to the point where we made sure it still had bearings in it mm, so okay. that was really about it drop the pan and yeah in so yeah had no idea what condition the cylinder bores were truly in what the um crank was truly in uh, ultimately it was it was ugly pretty well um, worn yeah what i think is something i want to mention here is is notice that on the model a opposed to like all the other motors that we've done it has no tin Hmm. So like, obviously it's not gonna have a valve cover because it's 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 a um, L head. But you have uh, like the timing cover is cast iron. Uh, well, the oil pan is tin, but the side cover is cast iron. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's just a little. Well, it's, it's extremely beefy. It's a it's a glorified tractor motor at this point. <laughs> um, so yeah, so popular thing, and it's gear to gear. There's no chain, uh, but it is a fiber gear. Yeah, which is int it, it is still baffles me. Um, and we've had, well, we've had fiber and we've had just like the plastic. Yeah, you had the plastic tooth, and all that is relative to you know quieting things down. But like the flathead uh, V8, um, Ford V8, that was a fiber as well. But we swapped okay. that over. The changes go to an all aluminum okay. setup. But um, yeah, I'll never quite yeah. understand that something can spin like that that fast, that kind of friction. Right for the you, you, the life of the engine and, and mm -hmm. it doesn't wear out, it doesn't just right. grenade itself yeah, yeah, into you a would billion think it would pieces. Just eat itself to death. And it has head, st head studs. Especially something made out of that fiber material in 1930. 30, right. It's not yeah. like all the space age materials that mm -hmm. we have now for doing stuff. No. All right, and the, the big reveal here. Yep, so this is the stock, it's a stock head. There's your, there's your valves, your top of your pistons, uh, copper gasket. Uh, that's our, that's the oil fill. We, we removed the monster energy drink uh, <laughs> cap that we lost along the way. <laughs> oil pan's pretty ugly. Now, um, you, there were some leaking issues on this too, right? Yeah, it would leak around the plug. So you can see where the, um, where the plug has been brazed, yeah. Like all this gunk around yeah, here. Yeah, all that brazing. It had cracked and it was seeping. Okay. Uh, of course, all the rest of that is is really oil from just being slung from the car and then wicking <laughs> wicking up on everything. Um, overall, though, the interior of the motor is, is quite clean. Uh, not a lot of buildup. All that you know gunk like we've seen in a lot of them. This is this was fairly clean. I mean, this was a. It wasn't running well, but it was running and usable yeah. to a certain extent, yeah, whereas yeah. some of the ones we've dug into recently yeah, uh, weren't running. <laughs> been sitting in a field for yeah. several decades. Yep. Uh, I thought just interesting, just being obviously being here with you and shooting a bunch of this stuff and, and Jordan as well, is that my brain was uh, is like trained to think in terms of eight. Mm -hmm. There's eight of everything. <laughs> there's eight cylinders, there's yeah. eight pistons, there's eight rods. Uh, all that sort of stuff. So it was funny. You would say, "Oh, this is gonna take me 20 minutes to do, or whatever." And you even had to think about yeah. it. Like, there's half as many as normal. Yeah, rethink. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So it was. It was always funny. Like, well, stuff, the, stuff would just. <clears throat> oh, oh, you're done. Yeah. Okay. Well, in the constant, where's the where's the cylinder heads at? Where's the other head? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. or the you know the box of pistons. You're like, where's the other box? Yeah. Right. So uh, overall, these these engines are fairly. I'm going to call them thin, meaning the crankshaft is very thin. There's mm -hmm. not a lot there. It doesn't need to have a lot, but you can see like the main bearings are very wide. So it has a lot of support, even though there's only three, three mains. That's also one of the reasons why they don't want to have a lot of RPM. Mm. They're not real fond of that. Um, but, uh, and then of course your rod, your rod mains are big as well. This is not a pressurized system. It actually, 
all the, all the oil pump does is put oil to the top to drain back down. And then on the end of the rods, you can, uh, yeah, we'll see actually when we go back together, even. I was going to back, go back and see. Even yeah. They, well, because since we're, I don't know if you can see it or not. But yeah, we'll see it eventually. Yeah. So on the end of the pistons, on the end of the rods, there's a, uh, there's a dipper. So it literally scoops go. oil. Yeah. So right up there, you can see on that. There. Yeah. Perfect. So as it, as it comes around this way, it grabs yep. oil and. Yep, it dips, it. it dips into the oil pan and, and pushes oil into that uh, rod journal. And then, of course, as it goes over its rotation, it continues to, to make its way to the other side. Um, the other thing is interesting, too. You can see that the, so the, the main bolts are square on one side, and then they have a, obviously a hex on the other. But they are not necessarily all on the same side. So, for instance... The bolt goes down and through, and then there's externally a, a nut on oh, the front okay. two. Um, and then the back ones, you can see they're, a, they're external to the bottom, which is interesting only from the fact that you're, if you first start, you're like, where in the hell is the nut at? <laughs> so, and they get a fair amount of torque, not a ton, but decent. Now, all this in here, this is stock. There was nothing yeah, done to this prior. 100% stock. Yeah, 100% stock. All the in, in so these are babbitted bearings. Um, it has a rope seal. Uh, well, I'm sorry, it's not even. A, it's a rope seal on the front. Technically, there's no real seal on the rear main. Hmm. The main bearing is the seal. So what you see at the very end, that little piece of aluminum, multiple grooves there by the stand, right here. Correct. That's a slinger, more than anything. Okay. So it just diverts oil away from leaking. Interesting. <laughs> is, is the best way I can put it. <laughs> it's like we know it's going to leak yeah. here, so we're going to give it a place to leak into? Kind of, yeah. And the idea is it doesn't, you know, in theory it shouldn't leak externally because, it's, again, it's not pressurized. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously we're rebuilding it to, to make it fresh, new, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you were doing something like this, is there, and you were just trying to, like, I don't know, maybe you had a bad ring or, or something like that, is there a is there a way to check and make sure like the bearings are still good as far as like the Babbitt stuff and yeah well that's and that's was that thing. an issue with ours at all uh, right so in general inspection you can ins you know you can inspect the bearings for big cuts and grooves though the grooves that are in there are actually oiling grooves mm -hmm. um, but I mean yeah so if you saw you know visible damage then you would know all right I have to have this rebabbitted for sure um, you can certainly you know set your um, caps down, torque them down, and inspect the diameters, you know, mm -hmm. like we normally do on an inserted bearing. Yep. Um, but one of the things that these all have is they have shims that go between the main cap and the block, and then likewise, of course, on the rod assembly. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind them shims is are as, as things wear, naturally wear, you take shim out to tighten that clearance up. And then it, what, essentially breaks itself back yep. into that space? Smears itself back into the... <laughs> Uh, to because where it wants you to know, be. when I think about what we've done over at Thoroughby before, when when they resize it, if mm -hmm. you if you take those two half circles and cut them down, then you don't have an actual circle right. yeah, anymore. Yeah. No, so in this no, case, you would egg. do that, but it wears itself. It wear back itself in back in, yeah, and tighten yeah. that and tighten that clearance up. Huh. Now, granted, this clearance isn't going to change on the sides, but you typically wear on your thrust surface, which is in the top of the cap and the in the block side, right. not cool. so much at the cap. And then this has an interesting valve setup. Um, I'll say a real pain. Um, so you have obviously a spring, but the valves, and if you look real tight here. here oh, yeah. So right here, you can see the guide has a split. And you can also see, so this is a through hole. Here's your valve, and here's the end of your valve. Well, they're both bigger than the hole. So what it is, is the valve guides are split and you have to drive them out to get the, basically the hole big enough yep. um, to get the valve out. Um, here's the cam camshaft comes out. I think we get to a shot where you pull all those out. Yeah, yeah. Camshaft is pretty, you know, a normal camshaft, if you will. Um, yeah, so, so why we haven't pulled the valves out at this point is <laughs> I needed to go home and I made a tool um, in the evening to pull this out because I didn't have time to order one and get it in. So I, I made it. I made a tool. Um, 
but in the meantime, we you know, pulled all these studs out because we're going to deck the top of the block. You know, everything's going to get cleaned up. I want all these out of there. And I knew we needed to inspect all the threads because we had a thread at Hershey that we had to replace at the show field mm -hmm. and wasn't necessarily real confident how good that was. Right. So we wanted to, to, to so really figure if get one, a good look at it. If one could be bad. Oh, yeah, yeah. And where else are one. they? Yeah, exactly. It's, and so, And that's something that you've talked about in all of our builds, which is like, if you're gonna take the time and spend the money to do all this, do mm -hmm. it right. Yeah. Inspect oh, yeah. all those things, yeah. replace the stuff that needs to be replaced, especially the full on internal bits. It's like, there's, it's one thing if you wanna skimp on some external something right. that you can at any given time replace, exactly. but something where you're gonna have to pull the whole engine, just do it. Yeah, yeah, just do it now. It, the money is, is zero relative to the, the problems that you'll have. Um, so here, just I'm just using some heat uh, this happens to be an inductive heater, really nice because I don't have to have an open flame and you can see it gets it red hot. Uh, double nut the studs, back them out, uh, uh, pretty simple and straightforward. Yeah, look at you with your little assembly line too. You, you didn't oh, just have two yeah. nuts to no, go, you, no. you can pile them on there and right. got them all done yep. straight in a row. That thing's awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's a slick tool. And we're not being paid to say that? Uh, nope. Unless they want to pay, want us want to pay us to say that. Yeah, they can send us a handful more of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one was a little. Yeah, there's one a little that was stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> when you get the vice grips out, mm -hmm. you know. And of mm -hmm. course, the same thing on the uh, intake exhaust manifold surface. All right, so here you go. Now you're knocking those things out. Yep. Yeah. So you can see the tool is underneath the valve head. And basically, you got to slam, slam down on the top of the valve, knock that uh, two-piece guide out, you know, into the, I'll call it lifter valley. Yeah, Jordan shot all this stuff with you, so there was, yeah, look, you have a big nut there too. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bunch of this stuff that uh, you asked me, like, hey, do you, do you remember when we took this apart? <laughs> how this? Thing? I was like, wasn't me, man. No, not me. <laughs> What's the what? One ad advantage to us documenting this frame by frame by frame is that we have the ability to go back and look at all these pictures while we're putting it back together and go, oh, yeah, yeah that's right. This longer bolt went here, which is like basically is the, what we tell everybody in DIYs, yeah. which is like take your phone take out. Take pictures. Take pictures the whole time. Every time you see something that's like, ooh, this could be tricky putting it back together, mm -hmm. take that picture and use yeah, it. it helps you out. Use it later. That's the best advice I can give anybody is, is take a lot of pictures along the way. And the top view pictures are good to start with, mm -hmm. but as you take layers off, you need to keep taking pictures. You can't, can't rely on just that. So here you can talk about that's, those are those split guides, yep, right? Yep, the split guides. And I don't know what they call that style of valve per se, but uh, other than a pain. <laughs> That's everything. Whoop. Oh, yeah, back up. Yeah, so the whole, the whole shebang. Um, the water pump, I think, is always funny because uh, water pump's clear over on the left there by the fan blade. Um, that is, as it's sitting on the table, is the is right side up, which always to me is backwards because you don't think of the shaft being exposed top wise. You mm -hmm. have it lower. Yeah, like but it's like quite the honestly, the reason it's the done shield. that way is you can access the the nut to tighten up the packing on the shaft mm. is why they do it. But this looks pretty grimy on the front uh, side yeah. too. Yeah. All right. Now this was a big difference for us because normally right. we're, we're at Thoroughby. Yep. So we could have had the block machined at Thoroughby's. We could have had basically everything done with exception of the babbitting. Mm -hmm. um, and we could have also taken the, the upgrade choice and put had everything cut relative to insert bearings and use okay. utilize insert bearings yep. instead um, however quite honestly what would be the fun in that and uniqueness so we kept with that to show what that babbitting process looks like and quite frankly I wanted to see it firsthand as well mm -hmm. so <clears throat> so that's why we we brought it down we found a we found a shop down in Ohio we've used in the past for a couple of the other Model A bills that we've done at Haggerty and um, I called up Ron's and they're like, heck yeah, bring that down here. Yeah. And I'm telling you what, there is zero regret because they're professionals. They truly um, cordial, 
all that good stuff that you want to find in a shop. Um, I don't want to call them a mom and pop shop, but they are a family owned shop. Mm -hmm. um, and, and their guys are all, all really good and, and really excited about you know, these, obviously it's their livelihood, but they, they also live and breathe it. They picked us up in two Model Ts and took us to dinner, <laughs> or four Model, uh, three Model Ts, and it was phenomenal. I mean, it was, cool. it was a great time. But yeah, so anyhow, we get, it's down in, uh, it's Shannon, Ohio, so it was about a seven hour drive for us. Um, and they are, they were ready for us and just knocked it out. Nice. I mean, it was fantastic. And for people who have tuned in after our intro, we're you know obviously answering a lot of questions that we that we saw come up in uh, in the YouTube comments and that and that sort of thing. But if you have any questions, just hold them to the end. We're going to do a Q and A session. If you have any specific questions about the build or how we shoot any of the video or any of that stuff, just hang out and uh, we'll get to those questions at the end. Yep, absolutely. All right. So Ron's. Yep. Cleaning. So hot tank in the motor. Um, it was pretty. Pretty quick transition here from hot tank <laughs> to a painted motor uh, into the boring bar, but uh, right, we missed some of the steps. <clears throat> yeah, we're gonna show everything. Um, so here, just you know, normal normal task, boring out the uh, block, and it uh, that particular block we had uh, it was pretty well whooped. So there's sleeves actually got put in here and, and boring oh, really? and boring it for pistons that were available. So I didn't realize that that yeah. we had sleeved them. So is it is it back to a stock piston then? Or uh, no, because stock pistons were not available. Okay. They were on back order for months. So we got oversized. So anyways. we're actually yeah we're actually thirty over. You can purchase a hundred and twenty over for this block. Goodness. Yeah. Would we have been able to cut ours originally to Maybe. that? Maybe. Oh, okay. Let's it had see. eighty on in it, and oh, the okay. bores were really whooped. <laughs> so we just uh -oh. opted for the other and, and went with it. Nice. So if that gets us like, man, what, one or two more horsepower maybe? Oh, more. Well, we're like 900 more cc now. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like more like a tenth of an ounce. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so speaking of that, so these motors were right about 35, 40 horse. They were advertised at 40 horse. They are closer to about 35 mm -hmm. uh, in reality. With the changes that we make as we go, we gain a little bit. I'll tell you what that is when we get there. Cool. So the hone, right? That's yep. what they're doing here. Yeah, hone, hone the size for the pistons. And then this jumps right into the uh, babbitting. Um, this particular pot, I think, is probably the tinning function. So, so, so we talk about it in the, in the updates, but the general process is completely melt out whatever's already on them. Um, and then once that's cleaned off, then you put a coat of tin on them. Um, and then, then you do the babbitting function. So this is him doing every step here. You see yep. him doing the dip over there and then coming and pouring yep. in a couple different vats of things. Looks like a yep. cleaning one and then the tin and then and now these used to be lead, but aren't lead anymore? Yeah, well, I don't know what the mixture was initially, uh, but now, yeah, it's not, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, it's tin, copper, and ammonium was the mixture. Um, so you can see, this is just the excess, right, that he's banging out of the... Yeah, you so you get flat, um, you get flash or whatever. Right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at this point, the the bearing, the the Babbitt bearing is actually poured into the rod here, right? And that's just yep. the excess. And it is. It's not only an excess from a process way where you have flash, uh, which is like where the where the molds come together, you get leakage. That flash, mm -hmm. obviously, when it solidifies, it cools. Then that gets knocked off. But then you also have they're they're flat out, you know much larger there's more material there than you need so you can machine machine Correct. it to size you do the fine yep. fine tuning with the cut afterwards yep and then the same process relative to the uh, main bearings and the cap same general process i mean you mm -hmm. have different tooling and, and it's never you know the block is the fixture at this point so right here he's what melting out the old well he's stuff. melting out and and preheating Oh, okay. It's at this point really it's more of a preheating the block.
because if there's any moisture in there and they pour the lead in, mm -hmm. it splatters like crazy. I mean, think about water going in the chicken grease. I mean, that's yep. same function. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, the... yeah. So I've I've had people ask me how how I would describe babbiting in general, and you know, initially, it, it's it's a ridiculously simple, and then very. I'll call it process detailed at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, it's like pouring lead sinkers. <laughs> I mean, that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, finish, you know, machining is, the, is really the key to all of it. So that's right out of the mold. <laughs> that's right, right out there. of the mold. Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's ugly. Okay. Right, for lack so, of a better word. In, yeah, in my head, when you were describing it to me initially, I thought it was solid, and then they did that scrape, but that scrape Although they come they through clean it later all up. and they right. clean it up, they, it's part of the Now, the rods thing. don't have it until they put it in. Okay. But the, the crank has it built into that. Gotcha. But they come in and, and clean all that up. So just a jig that clamps on. Yeah. And yep. Pours in. Cool. So um, in general, they, so I asked them how how many rods they could do in a day. Mm -hmm. And they said at one point, they said they have done up to like 350 rods in a day. Um, they prefer to do that in the winter because uh, that room gets ridiculously hot, okay. obviously. And in Southern Ohio is pretty humid, hot and humid. Um, obviously they're not doing that on a daily basis. You know, that's, that's you know, for a year's production or what have you, but. So this is the, um, a line boring function. This is really slow uh, because yay for time lapse. Well, Babbitt is, um, of course, it's gooey, right? Think of lead. Mm. Lead's gooey. It's malleable. So when you come, they they cut it. It cuts real slow. They can't cut it fast because it would overheat the tool and it would just it would just gum up. So they come in. They cut real slow, and you can see the finish. I mean, the finish is is very impressive. It's a it's like single point mirror tool. like yeah. It's a single point tool. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's really nice. That is cool. I just love all those machine shop work mm -hmm. stuff. It's just, uh, just to see those processes happen right. is, is super cool. And, and you notice this, hap I'm here. I, I'm actually running the lathe here. Oh, so to keep things moving uh, on our daily deal, so they had some of this stuff, obviously the crank, uh, we put a counterbalance on it. So what it amounts to is, uh, you see where all the holes are in that weight, that's a normally a, a solid, just a circle. It wouldn't have an right. offset you balance. You can see it right it. here, this yeah. is the original, yep. this is not original. Correct. Right here, this is the yep. original part. And I mean, now might be a good time to talk about all oh, this is part of the upgrade aspect right. of it. Yeah, yeah. So, so the first step in our upgrades was to do a counterbalance crankshaft, which then turns also into a lightened flywheel. Um, but overall, you have the same amount of rotating mass, so you're not losing that torque um, that you gain from having a big, heavy flywheel. Mm -hmm. um, but you have a balanced assembly, so it runs smoother. So what they do is they take the stock crank, it has that you know, non-flywheeled section to it, and then they take and have a, a, a weight, a piece of steel, uh, laser cut. It has a hole in it. They actually drill the crankshaft. It gets one bolt to hold it in there. The bolt is, is welded over so the bolt can't back out. And then also it's welded on the ends. And then you have to turn that, um, the shiny end of it there, you turn that to size. This basically right to make sure it clears there's no issues of clearance going mm -hmm. into the block and then that whole assembly gets balanced um just and, like normal okay yeah similar yeah well, i mean we've balanced stuff before yeah. and that's the whole yep. you spin it it tells you where to take weight out Yep. exactly right yep and then here's our high compression head and what all we're doing here is just making sure the surface is flat so we get a nice good seal because you have a copper gasket that not real forgiving. Mm -hmm. um, now we got this at Hershey, right? Yeah, we we brought that. the engine to Hershey, but we ended up finding that. Yep, yep, yeah. We brought the engine to Hershey with, with the stock head on it. Mm -hmm. We come across this uh, high performance, you know, high compression head on it. I think it's six and a half, if I remember right. 
Compression. Uh, yeah, compared to five or five and a half. And we were going to put it on, on the show field, but when we had to make the repair to the stud, we made the decision that we probably shouldn't push our luck. All right, because you get more, com more yeah. compression, so it's going to be more right. pressure on yep. those bolts. Exactly. I right. got you. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is just cleaning up that head um, and, and making sure that he's deburring the edges here. But you can see how big that chamber is. So, so unlike all the rest of the motors, you don't have to do any valve clearance here. Oh, okay. You know, like when we put them together and we check for valve clearance to the piston? Yep. Well, you, you can't interfere here mm. because the, the valves are offset from the piston. They don't come up over the top of it. It's also why they're inefficient because of the... The, the 180 degree turn everything has to make. 180 degrees in, 180 degrees yeah. out. Yeah. And then, you know, the this is the final piece here. Um, now, here's something I found. Two things. One thing I learned immediately. I have never in the, oh, I don't even know how long now, 25 <laughs> years, let's say, mm -hmm. that I've been around machining and machinists and so on and so forth. I have never seen red die chem, ever. It's always blue. Mm -hmm. So when he put this on here, I'm like, well, what is that? And he's like, machinist die? I'm like, no, it's not, it's red. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah. He goes, I said, I have always used blue. And he goes, I've never seen blue. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I, don't know, I thought it was really interesting. Um, but yeah, so the other thing is, he's hand cutting the seats. So That's no, cool. yeah, look at that. no elaborate means. tools, you know, as far as that. And, you, and I ask him, I mean, he says, is this a big deal? Now, this boy's got some big forearms. <laughs> I mean, he's a, he's, a, he's a muscular guy. But, he, um, but yeah, he just, just hand turns these in there. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. And, cool. It, and it lines up off. So back to the guides. We, did not, we do not have the split guides in here anymore. Mm -hmm. this, we're changing it over part of that performance. The, yeah, valve yep. over there. It's, it's basically, for all intents and purposes, a small block Chevy valve. Okay. Uh, design wise, you know, general design. So the idea is now you just have a pressed in guide that doesn't have to do anything other than be in the block, slip your valve in, put a small block Chevy keeper and retainer in there and, and a spring and the way you, way you rip. But, but yeah, so then he, you know, like I said, hand cutting, uh, checking everything, but he's hand cutting. And then last step is, um, uh, lapping them in, hand lap. That's what that uh, tool is, which is just a suction cup on a piece of on a piece of wood, or if you buy a new one, it's plastic, of course. But <laughs> but it has wood grain mm -hmm. normally. Uh, here, the the big or the small ends of the rods all have a bushing, so there he presses in the bushing. Now, I want you to notice that I I love the old Pepsi Coke all those types of wooden box containers that they use because it, quite honestly the thickness is right and they shuttle things around and, mm -hmm. and, and it, they work really nice but they have a lot of rods in stock and it was hard not to get over the fact that you could grab any rod out of that box and they work mm -hmm. because we're always in the mode of these are the only rods we have you know right. so that, that was a little a little different but so here's where you, what you were talking about earlier about cleaning up those, and then this is—is yeah. is this where they get the scrape? Nope, no, that comes in another, um, actually another process. That go, there's just a piece they clamp into it, and they they oh. turn a turn so a crank. Just sizing them. So there. that's just sizing them there. Yep. They size them, and you see in the last hit it faces them. So if you go right there, see how that color change? Mm -hmm. So it just it faces it. That gives you your thrust surface. So your bearing width is correct as well. And then this is their assembly room in normal terms. So uh, <laughs> that was the next thing I had a hard time wrapping my head around was, hold it, the rods aren't inside the block. This is going to be a problem. Well, they'll actually just sit there, and, as you can see, just sit and dance on the edge. And it's like, wow, that's, that's slick. Um, Wait, why are they doing that? They're just making sure that it... So what he's doing is he is checking the clearance by feel. <laughs> so the amount, so as, uh, this is BJ, so as we were running through this, uh, one of the things he does is he takes the rod, bolts it down tight, you know, torques it down, holds it up there, and basically the amount of push, and he's done enough of them, you know, it's all feel, 
but the amount of push. And he said, if it falls down, it's way too loose. Mm -hmm. And if you got to knock it to make it move, it's too tight. <laughs> now I grabbed a hold of it and it was like, I was like, holy smoke. He goes, yeah, that one's perfect. And, and I, <laughs> and it, basically at the end of the day, it's about 20 to 25 foot pounds of torque to get it to move. <laughs> so it was like, wow, that, I would that's never, no I never expected. Yeah, that's just no the pistons. bearings. That's not, that's no pistons. Yeah, it's purely the drag of the bearing. Yep. And there is a light amount of oil on them, so it's not like it's, yeah. you know what I mean? There's a little bit of uh, lubricity in there, but not much. Um, and then, of course, the, the mains are the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the uh, intake and exhaust manifold. They bolt together on the head, and they're, um, and this fixture basically does the machining correctly. Okay. So what you don't want to do is over torque everything and distort it because you can spread the ports away from each other. Uh, because on the engine, it just uses a little, like a little T-clamp to hold it in place. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're fly cut at the same time. And right now, since we're just looking at just the exhaust and the intake, uh, this is the Cerakote that oh, we, right. get, we get done at, at West Michigan. And uh, Drew and his guys do a phenomenal job on this. And this coating is beautiful. Um, I can't say enough about it. So on that exhaust manifold and that rib section, if you're not familiar with the Model A, and if you're not from a northern climate, mm -hmm. that's the heater. All right, because that, that little That's your radiator, if you will. Radiator for the heater, the core, heater core in today's uh -huh. world. And, and then you put on an air duct, which we'll see later. But the idea is that as the heat rises up through there, it blows air across and into the cabin. It works remarkably well. Um, but yeah, that coating though goes nowhere. It doesn't smoke when you start up. It stays on. I mean, it's yeah, we've, we've used it on a lot of projects now, have. and it's it's fantastic. So back back up for just a second. Back right there. That's good enough. So if anyone's run, wondering if Ron's Machine Shop does any Model A's, notice that behind them there's, there's one, two, three, four, five blocks just in that, mm -hmm. it, just in that view. I mean, they're, they're stacked up like cordwood around there, and they're <laughs> all customer builds. Yeah. I mean, they're not just building to stick on a shelf. They, are, they have a purpose. Not as rare as you might think. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so here is our upgrade. Now, I mentioned we did the counterbalance um, uh, uh, crankshaft. This is back to the flywheel. Now, if you go all the way back to the front, you'll see where the flywheel has that, it's about an inch and a half edge on it, right where he's um, uh, retapping holes. So that gets machined completely off, and then and then they have to retap the holes uh, relative to so the- So there'd be a big lip here otherwise. Yep. Yep, exactly. So what we're doing is we're taking weight off of the off of the flywheel. It does get rebalanced, and it gets balanced as an assembly with the um, uh, with the pressure plate. Because now the pressure plate that's going on this is actually a later model truck uh, pressure plate. So it's basically off of like a fifty forty six oh, okay. in that general. I forget exactly what year it is, but that general uh, era. So it goes from about. I don't know, probably 12 inches down to about a nine mm -hmm. inch. And it's basically, it, it's, it's a little less rotating mass and, uh, and really a more common uh, and better uh, pressure plate to, to have access to. All right, all done at Ron's. Yep, everything's boxed up, wrapped up, thrown in the back of the minivan and head north. Which was a really good feeling because we were down there basically two days mm -hmm. and we had everything we needed to go back together. It was, it was great. Um, also, the, the parts all come slightly possessed in those boxes on the right back and they can move themselves and, yeah. and get set up. And um, if, I mean, it's good to mention now anyway, but if you're interested in more of the Ron's Machine Shop stuff other than what we show here and really any of the more in-depth stuff we have the redline update videos mm -hmm. check those out if you just look search for the either the redline updates playlist or redline update model a any of the stuff um goes into and granted we're going into a lot of detail here but there you get to see 
a lot more stuff yeah. happen sort of behind the scenes rather than what the, we miss here we've probably covered there and what we've missed there we're probably covering here yeah and i'm sure we're duplicating <laughs> plenty of stuff too and we'll answer all the other questions yep. additional questions <clears throat> so yeah some some more of our stop motion stuff mm -hmm. which is fun and now it it came like this because that was the easiest way to ship it yeah, yeah. I, there was no sense in boxing the crankshaft up separately. It rode here perfectly. Obviously, we d we took the rods off so they weren't rattling around, um, and then put some visqueen over it just so we didn't get gunk in it. Mm -hmm. So we did not need to clean anything. I mean, it was beautiful, right? So part of our assembly process was <coughs> disassembling it again. Yeah. Hmm? Yep. Pull it down, and getting it on the engine the engine stand. <laughs> At least momentarily. At least for one shot. <laughs> So getting the crankshaft in, yep. and that here that you can talk about that the, the little gold. Oh yeah, um, right. So you'll see. Right there. So right there, you'll see at the at the rear main there there's these brass, uh, pardon me, shims. Uh, they you buy them in different thicknesses. I think at one point I, some of them I know you can peel them. These particular these particular ones you cannot. They are they are specified in a thickness, but you can readily buy them. Um, in whatever thickness you need. So you could pull it out, Mike, it. if it wasn't your engine, Mike, yeah. it go, oh, it's this big, I need to take this much out of yep. it, put another yeah, one Yeah, exactly. And I think these are like 14 thousandths. Okay. So in theory, you have a lot of changes you can make over the lifespan of this, barring you don't throw a rod through the side. Here's you? what you were talking about earlier, too, with those yeah. the mains. Yep, yep. So you can see right there, there's a nut coming through. Um, which is just not typical. I mean, that's not what you normally see anymore. Right. That is actually holding the main yeah. Yeah. bearing cap down. So lightly oil everything, no assembly lube. Mm -hmm. um, it was not recommended to use an assembly lube at all because the assembly lube tends to get too sticky. And he recommended just a, a basically the motor oil we're gonna use. So just a light, I think we used a 30 weight um, and just a real light amount on there. And then, of course, the same thing on the pistons. Um, uh, anything particular here about, I mean... Yeah, the, it, a little different than a modern engine. I mean, here, what we're, all we're doing, we're doing all the normal stuff as far as, you know, oil in the skirt, oil in the, the rings once they're in, oil in the wrist pin, putting in snap rings to hold the wrist pin. They're, base, they're a floater type of setup. Yeah, you um, but them. you can see right here in the ring pack, so you have normal cast iron rings mm -hmm. but usually the oil ring yep the oiling ring is the last one there with that spring where you have a little yeah well that's actually a cast ring as well so instead of having a thin steel ring uh two thin steel rings with a call it a corrugated spring mm -hmm. in between there this is actually literally a spring like a normal long spring and it has a wire in there but that goes over that cast ring. It does the same function, but the design of it is, is just a lot different than, than what we're used to. Uh, so you have to be careful with all of the rings not to crack them when you put them on. Um, and another on case pistons. where you did four of them and I was like, oh, yeah. oh you're done. Yep. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. And of course, this is uh, specific. You can see an arrow on the block and you can see an arrow on the piston because the dipper obviously has to be going clockwise to actual function and mm -hmm. dip in. It will assemble either direction. <laughs> um, and also to note right here, we jumped how we were mounting this engine. Yes, oh yeah. So we, with the, you know, the audacity of, I can do this however I want, mm -hmm. because how I took it apart was we pulled the bell housing off, we were only disassembling. So I mounted everything off the back of the block like normal. Um, not a big deal for disassembly. Mm -hmm. But on the assembly side, I need to be able to turn that crankshaft over. And given how tight everything is, I had to get to the back end of it with the other style I set up. I could not get to it. In fact, right there, you can see the adapter that goes on the end of the crankshaft so I can rotate it. Yep. So we bought this uh, side mount um, deal that holds on the, uh, actually a water neck and then into the pan rail. But it really confused us multiple times on how we could set up a shot because we were rotating in the other direction all the yeah. time. Yeah, we'd always say, oh, I can, I, you know, I'd say, it. hey, can you turn it this? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> yeah, we can't. No, no, I can't do it that way. 
Yeah, it's, so. it's always a, it's a, it's a dance between where I need to put yep. the camera and where you need to stand so you're not in yeah. the way. Yep. Uh, so sort of pause right here for a second. Um, there's a couple things in here I want to, I, I want to mention. So obviously all the, that's different. So these are all bolt and nut set up normal, but they're all castle nuts. Uh, so every rod in has a cotter key that goes through it. Mm -hmm. um, that's for obvious for anti-rotation, so it doesn't back itself off. Um, the center uh, main bearing is now pressurized, so that's what that copper line is. Yeah. So that's an upgrade, pressurize the main bearing, uh, the center main. Um, they don't pressurize the ends for, uh, I'm going to say they don't need it as much, I guess. Um, and then the other is note that the whole engine, as we went through this, everything internal is red, painted, painted red. Yes. That was a it, question that came up yeah, quite often. And, and same thing with the crankshaft. Now there's a couple reasons for it. The first reason is aesthetically pleasing, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Quite honestly. The other reason is normally what you'll do is in a lifter valley, valley, you will put, it's, uh, commonly known as gliptol, you'll, you'll brush this in in the lifter valley to aid oil drain, right? Mm -hmm. So it drains back. Meaning it gives it a smoother surface. Smoother surface, surface right. So it, it, it's, it's slippery, it drains back quicker to the bottom, mm -hmm. into the pan. That's kind of why they do that here. The other is more of a practical function that these motors sit more than they run. Mm -hmm. And when they sit and it's bare casting, any any condensation within the motor just from normal temperature change, even if they're in a controlled room, mm -hmm. they'll rust. Oh, okay. So to stop everything from rusting internally, they naturally just coat everything in gliptol, and it's like it's not going anywhere. Um, well, preservation. Yeah, more of a preservation um, function than yep. anything. Uh, here, before the camshaft can go in, <laughs> and and we didn't screw it up, by the way, right? Yes, no, we didn't we put the cam in first and go. Oh hell, we can't get the lifters in. But all the lifters go in the hole first, and then the camshaft can go in. Uh, we put the only thing I uh, the face of the lifters I did put uh, normal cam break in there you go. lube. Yep. Even though it doesn't look like it in that shot. <laughs> Well, I didn't put it on the lobes until it was in, but yeah. So now there's our, our new valve train. Um, so we have springs, a single spring. Uh, lift on this cam was like 330 um, thousand, so it's not a ton of lift. It has no rocker arm, so it gets no gain. Uh, you'll see the end of the lifters are up on the top side of those springs. They all have, they're all uh, adjustable now. Mm -hmm. So that's where we just get, a hex nut to adjust them. Yeah, hex nut, which is a You'll see a pain here as we if we show the adjustment. Uh, normal, actually, a normal spring uh, compressor now works well. Yeah, here's here you're getting your setting your yeah. flash. Here. So why I say it's a pain in the butt is you can't go to normal terms. What you would do is you would go set the lifter at its at the at the base or the center line of the cam, um, and then that takes all the pressure off the spring, and then you set your your lash. So I think this was 12 thousandths. Put 12 thousandths feeler gauge in there, you set your lash. Well, what you have to do is you have to set it. Then you actually have to rotate it and guess how much to turn that nut <laughs> because the lifter side of the nut that you, that you can hold to stop it from twisting goes up into the bore. Yep. So it's yeah, like, I mean, you can, you can, yeah, see, you can see it right as they come yeah. up and down your... Yep. Um, well, and I bet the interesting thing is, is, and this is something that we, or we, as in you yeah. run into with all of these is, aside from like big block, small block Chevy, these are engines yeah. that you're doing for the first time yeah. Oh, and yeah, yeah. possibly only time. Oh, yeah. And so it's, it's <laughs> this sort of thing is where it's, I'm sure the guys at Ron's who might do this know that a quarter turn oh, yeah. is 100%. a, you know, a, a yep. thousandth of a, of an inch. And then, yep. then they can just be like, Oh, yep. And don't have to do maybe quite as many yeah. trial and errors as. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. I bet you uh, on a couple of my probably adjusted 20 times to get, but I'm also trying to sneak up on it. So, you know, you're mm -hmm. being conservative about it, but 
But yeah, so that tended to be a little bit longer process than normal. So now that's all done, and wow, we got a behind the scenes shot in there, look at that. <laughs> so now the big side cover on there, I put some stainless bolts in here instead of the stock ones, and it was purely from a, well, aesthetics and mm -hmm. longer lasting. <laughs> <clears throat> and here's a crossover tube, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a drain back tube from the lifter valley going back down to the pan. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, and we, <laughs> He had a fun time getting those stupid little <laughs> yeah. uh, gaskets to go. Yeah, keeping the, the gaskets in place was, mm -hmm. a, especially the way we, if it would have been in normal terms, I would have laid it flat. Right. So gravity would have worked for me, but yeah. since I'm twisting on the wrong axis now, I, I had no, no such luck. Yeah. In case where <clears throat> definitely the, hey, pause that for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The time lapse makes it look like it went much smoother than it actually did. Yep. All right, got your timing gears on. Yep, More of that lip tall stuff that's a coat and everything on the insides. Yep. And that's just that's like if you do if you wanted to do that thing, that's just stuff that you can just buy. Like lip tall at any auto parts oh, yeah, store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's also that's what they coat um, electrical electric motors, motors and stuff. With. Yeah. Yep. yep. Now I'm sure somebody's asking. Why on earth do you have the crank pulley in the way and you're putting the timing cover on? Well, the timing cover has a rope seal in it. Um, yeah, and it has some Teflon. In so, there. right, and the, and the pulley has the other side of that seal. So you have to have the pulley on. So when you put the seal, you wouldn't be able to put all the covers on and then, There's your yeah. So if I, had all the if I had the timing cover on and the oil pan on and then tried to put the Put that on for the first time. I just wipe that seal. I'd push it right into the, mm -hmm. push it out of the out of the groove. So. Yeah, making sure it <clears throat> doesn't leak oil. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. there's perfect. That's the other side of yep. it. And then of course trim it off. And then I also you you tap it in with a big socket to kind of set it. And I sealed this up tight mm -hmm. as far as that goes. Um, the side cover is the only thing I left where I only sealed one side, so it, if mm -hmm. it needs to come on and off. And at this point too, you had <clears throat> you had made the fix and cleaned up the yeah um, yeah. So I completely shaved off the all the brazing of of the around the uh, oil drain yeah right and welded in a fresh um, uh, steel bung. And being that I, I TIG welded that in there and I did not, any brazing would cause a lot mm -hmm. of nastiness with that. So. Now with all the other engines we had done, let's call it your, more, your uh, paint booth style with a yep. higher end paint, but this was mostly yeah, rattle can. Yeah, this was mainly rattle can. Mm -hmm. And the reason that transpired that way was, well, that's what Ron's does. So I just left it there. Mm -hmm. It was green and we moved on. Uh, we certainly could have came back, trimmed it all off, scuffed it, painted it, you know, like like normal. So it it will probably not color wise probably not last as well, I know it won't last as well. But mm -hmm. but it was a good quality from that standpoint. Now here's an interesting thing where we going back yep. to what we talked about earlier, which is you pulled all the studs out because you wanted to yep. double check anything, but uh, or double check and make sure that there weren't issues with them. But the one that you put the helicoil in yeah the bottom was blown out <laughs> right so it went so, into the water yeah tank. so first thing is for everybody screaming at me no i do not need to put teflon on <laughs> any one of these studs because they do not technically go into the water jacket mm -hmm. except for one of them <laughs> which because of the age and whatever happened in its previous life the bottom of that um uh thread the, the blind hole was was blown out. Yep. In fact, I have the chunk. Remember we found the yep. chunk? We yeah, flipped we were, the motor over. When we were flipping oh, over, it was like, ting, 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 ting. Uh, it has nothing to do with the fact of how we put the helicoil in. It was just, it was blown out yep. um, from probably putting a stud in or something in it too long at some point. So at that point, my, my thought was, is how do I know none of these, the rest of these don't have a crack? Yep. And put Teflon on them. They also help, they don't rot themselves together with Teflon. Mm -hmm. So there's advantages to it that's not required, um, but 
one of those this, extra steps to yeah just safeguard hope, not having a problem hopefully yeah. not have yep. water spewing into your yep now oil. for those that have been watching we had a copper gasket and now we have a uh, composite gasket um, this is a best brand composite gasket ron's recommended the composite gasket over the copper um, this is I think that is probably one of the largest debates that I've heard with Model A engines is copper mm. or composite, copper or composite. Mm. Um, meaning I think you can get more people to agree on what brand beer to drink, as long as it's cold, <laughs> than which, which style of gasket. So um, we're going with what they recommended. And they have more experience doing it than I do, so it is what it is. The bolts go marching one by one. Yep. Hurrah. Oh, wait, did you hide the spark plugs inside? <laughs> I don't know how they got in that <laughs> hole, but come out like worms. And I did the same thing on the studs here for there. Now, these copper gaskets on here, um, they're like a copper laminate type of function. They were the only thing recommended. Mm. Um, even <laughs> even after having it completely you know, milled flat on the, on the intake and exhaust, to have it milled flat, still use these to... They have a bit of... They got some. They have some give to them, yeah. To take up any, uh, well, like changing heat and mm -hmm. all that, yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. Cool. All right, we're moving right along. Again, we will answer any questions to anybody watching um, that you have, uh, and we have the Model A sitting right over nope, there. We're gonna right there. we're gonna fire it up uh, after we're done talking here, so you should hang out and watch, get to hear it again. Um, water, ne water necks. Mm -hmm. The secret to the water necks not cracking when you torque them down. So there's two bolts which are actually head bolts uh, or studs. You put your seal in like normal. You put your water neck on like normal. You would torque this down, I think it was 65 foot pounds, which is a lot higher than normal mm -hmm. for a water neck. Um, regardless of how flat all that type of stuff everything is, it's still recommended to actually put a normal paper matchstick <laughs> underneath the corners or the ears of the of that so it doesn't crack when you when you lock it down mm -hmm. now since we're in uh, 2019 neither one of us smoke or light anything on fire evidently <laughs> without a lighter or you right. know some torch sort of fancy torch whatever, yep. neither one of us had any match books so I had to improvise with uh, I used um, I think three pieces of business card is mm -hmm. what that is. That was our approximate thickness. Yeah, and it gets cinched off there. Yep. Uh, well, the other thing too is this is the new water neck because the one that we had oh. looked like it had been broken several times, several times and welded back together. It yeah. had more brazing on it than it did casting anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it was nasty. But it worked. Yep. You know, so, so be it. And then here's a brand new water pump. Uh, this is the a bearing style quote unquote leakless, because uh, they're known to leak. Of course, it still has some packing in it, grease fittings on the front and back bearing. And then note that there is no cam seal in the back of the block in normal terms. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, normally there's like a, a freeze plug type of function in all the blocks. Mm -hmm. This utilizes that paper gasket. So I put sealant on there and then we have a brand new bell housing because the other bell housing was cracked oh, okay. just like I didn't realize that. yeah it was it had been repaired multiple times inside outside uh, everywhere and my favorite tool yes <laughs> so this is essentially I mean walk walk me through quickly what what this does and why you're <clears throat> doing that yeah so on the bell housing bolts or I'm sorry, this is on the flywheel. Oh, yeah. So bell housing's torqued down. Uh, we'll get there. Here. Put the flywheel on, yep. and now everything... Well, actually, the bell housing's yep. uh, safety wire as well. So the idea behind safety wire is a lot like the cotter, p cotter pins, but on a bolt head, you can't hold a bolt head from uh, rotating. So the idea is you run safety wire in between them. Obviously, they can turn a little bit, but they can't come all the way out. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's all about. And that is a special tool relative to... You know, it's like one of them old, the old-fashioned drills where you just push them in. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very that, satisfying. It's got that long to use. gear to it. Yeah, it's, it is very. 
Uh, when we were doing the breaks and I was helping you out, I got to go and spin a couple of those and you're yeah. just like, oh, this is fun. Yep, yep. And then right, here and then is that smaller clutch um, assembly. From a later model truck. Yeah, from a later model truck. Car truck. V8, actually, is what it amounts to. And, of course, we make a big mess, so time yeah, to... big mess, get things cleaned up, and roll in our... What? I finally figured out how to get more work done. All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> or to just make... Or, or get more relaxing done, either way. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize you'd look there. Uh, oh, hey. <laughs> uh, yeah. We got a 22 ounce cold Pennzoil there. Mm -hmm. All right, and action. There it is. So there it is. There's our heater box on there that has that Cerakote on it again, so I don't have to worry about that melting off or getting nasty. And uh, yeah, and we put an air filter on it, which they never came with air filters. Mm -hmm. Now I keep even today. I had a comment that. I think won't run at all with that air filter in it. Well, it's actually running fairly well. I believe some of that is because we increased the the compression and it actually has a little more draw now okay. on that carburetor. So wait, why wouldn't it? Because it because of the chokes restriction. It? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'll run. Uh, it would basically run rich mm. or yeah, lean, I guess. Rich, not bringing enough air in, but still having fuel. Yep. And put the start, I try to put as much stuff on as possible so it's, it's in the way. I think we addressed this in one yeah. of our Redline updates, but I love yep. that you, you clear-coded over yes. this that's I've, a sample. I've preserved that we, its authenticity. That we got from Schneider's. Yep, yep. Uh, on from, the drive. Mr. Schneider himself on a <laughs> on Sunday drive. afternoon. Oh, there's another view of it. Here's your engineering sample part. This is all I got. <laughs> when it's still working fantastic. Yep. Um, yeah, everything rolled back together quite nicely. Of course, putting this relative to the torque tube was a little tricky. You had to help me with that, get everything yep. lined up to get everything down in there. And no, it, it definitely took a next, it, you needed an extra set of hands. To, yeah, and there's some things on this that it's, I think it's funny because as simple as this car is, there's still areas where it's needlessly tight. Mm -hmm. It's like, really? We couldn't, you couldn't have made a little more room right here. <laughs> but it is what it is. Oh, uh, you go. You take it. Look how nasty that fuel is sitting in the um, the bowl there. Oh yeah, yeah. That fuel was was bad. It had a bunch of crumbs in it. You you took that out, and the whole garage just smelled yeah, like that reeked. Yep. rotten gasoline. So we put. <laughs> oh, that too. It's like daylight outside, and then something happened, and <laughs> dark. Somebody <laughs> and shut went, off the lights yeah. out there. We had to go, who knows, find a part, yeah. do something. Yep. Yeah, because this was a late night, uh, yep. if you remember. We, we needed things done, and I believe we went home at 1230. Mm -hmm. And I was delirious in the back and doing light tricks. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you watch it very quickly, I, you, you can sort of tell that I spell Haggerty in the back. Semi, yeah. sort of. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you were delirious and thought you were at the club, evidently. Yep. Yep, having my own rave outside the garage. Uh, so yeah, buttoning everything up. Yeah, if if you've never, if you if you're not if someone's not familiar with a Model A and how the how the the frame and the suspension and the brakes and the engine and everything all tie together, mm -hmm. they really need to take some a look. Next time you're at a car show, or have the option to look at one that's original. You know, I mean at least original and general function, uh, it is really interesting. Uh, the suspension ties to the everything. Mm. I mean, it is really weird. All right. So next morning, fresh gas in it and a toe strap. So toe strap, I want to address that because <laughs> The reason we're using a toe strap instead of trying to start it with a starter is quite honestly not to wear out the starter because it takes, and I measure this with torque wrench, it takes 120 foot-pounds of torque to rotate this motor over. Everything is done perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, in normal fashion, it should take about, I don't know, 30 inch pounds. Mm. Um, so it takes a lot of torque. This is a six-volt starter. 
Um, I, I go, granted, it has lots of torque in that starter because of that, but there would have been a lot of rah, 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 rah and it's just yep. easier to tow it. Um, and that was recommended by Ron's by, as by well. Ron's, yep. In fact, fire it up and take it for a ride. Don't, yeah. their don't whole, sit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Their whole, whole break-in guide yeah. of like, this will void your warranty yeah. unless you do yeah. this is yeah. like, you know, do it, run it at this right. speed for this amount of time, then this speed at this amount of time. Yep. So we kind of mapped out where we were going to go. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, yep. and had camera stuff ready, like, okay, like once this is going, <laughs> once we got to go. We got one chance at this. Yep. yep. Uh, and granted, if you watch the um, Redline update for this one in particular, we did have a little yeah. bit of trouble. And we'll talk about that a little bit yeah. when we get over there. Yeah, complete transparency on my couple of screw ups. But yeah, that's right. But it's, it's life. When you're used to working on something a different way, yeah. and then have something that works differently, and then, I mean, we had tons of people being like, oh, if you just do this, this, and this, you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we also had an issue with the distributor, and mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, exactly. Who's that idiot? I don't know. Tumbleweed, I guess. <laughs> so I, I think it's perfect that we use the Hershey truck from 15 yep. to pull the 16 project. Not only did we pull it here, we also pulled the chassis to Hershey to build the car. So Lots of everything was fitting. Connections. I might be able to hear this if I do this. This is getting pulled right now. Um, well, at least in, sorry, in the Redline update, like you hear this tick, 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 yeah. tick, but the car is not actually running. No, it's just turning over. Okay. So yeah. what we did is we initially, because we had no good way to we had no good way to, to prime the pump. Yep. So because of the way the, the pump and the camshaft and everything go, you have to actually rotate the motor to, to turn the pump. Yep. So what we did is we drug it around the block here, around our facility, and in gear, ignition off, and let it prime. Yep. Uh, back. Then we went to, then we went to ignition on. Started up after we fixed the pump. Then this is our break-in drive. Yep. And I mean, this was, we, we spent a good chunk of the day working through the issues we that had we had. Chinks. Yes. Uh, but then once it was running, we just went just for went. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it ran, ran well. I only got uh, cooling on me one time. <laughs> uh, and that's only because I put too much in. Yep. All right. So well, yeah. with that said, let's, yeah, let's head roll over, over there and, and start her up. And, uh, and you can, if you want to, you can. Um, talk about any of the distributor stuff, but then we'll also answer um, some of your questions. Yeah. yeah. I think good. you need a freeze frame of that, and we'll just hang oh, it on the wall. Here. I like that. Yeah, that's not bad. Oh, geez. Sorry, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so we're over here now. All good? So I'll go through a couple of real quick issues that we had. Yeah, nobody cares what I have to say at this point. What's that? <laughs> nobody cares what I have to say at this point. Yeah. You, you do your thing. Here, let me get this. I'll pull this out of the way real fast. Uh, you guys are bringing a camera over, yeah. I'm assuming. Yep, Jordan's coming. Okay. All right, you're good? All right, well, if you're still with us, we're gonna talk about what, a couple, I wanna say just a couple things where I made a mistake here or there. Uh, the very first problem we had is we did not have any spark. Uh, what we found out, or what we yeah. attributed it to directly, was the way the key assembly goes into a pod, it was basically grounding itself out. So now the key is just <laughs> literally dangling uh, until I can I'll rectify that. Here. If you want to grab it and hold it up, um, yeah. do you have the Oh, uh, I got it over there cleaning it up. Oh, but, gotcha. So there's a, there's a bezel that this, the key goes in here, bezel that goes over it, and of course... Um, this side of the, the hot basically grounds, is grounding out. It's a relatively common issue. Um, so I need to address that um, as far as a better fix than this. But that was the first issue. We didn't have any spark. Then we had spark. Then we drug it around. Then we didn't have spark at the right time. Because I went through and rebuilt the distributor as far as pulled all the part, cleaned everything up, put it all back together. And... The issue was, so when you set this down in here into the hole, 
uh, in normal fashion, what you would do is you would set your gear to where it needs to be at, um, so on and so forth, uh, in rotor. This, the, the point, your uh, lobe for your rotor, or your points, is adjustable. This is actually a, a, uh, you know, a flathead screw, pulls it out, and you can rotate this and set where that needs to be at. I went through everything I could find on how to do that, and I followed the directions, uh, the written directions, and I was always in the wrong spot. Finally, I'm like, okay, let's look at this logically, how things rotate, when it needs a spark, set it up that way, and boom, it fired up. So I think one of the things we so may do- So what you're saying is don't read directions. Don't read directions. Just do it yourself. Do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> So I think truly what we may, I think what we should do uh, at some point, I think we'll go through and do a, a little quick how to set this up and talk about truly the function. So then when you get into any vehicle, you can say, hold it, I know what the function is. I know where this needs to be at. So once we iron that out, then we had uh, spark at the right time. And then we had one instance where it wanted to backfire well, that was actually driven by the ding-dong behind the wheel because that ding-dong, instead of having it in second gear, was actually reverse, and it backpedaled a whole bunch of fuel into the exhaust. When I got it in the second, instead, um, well, Ben thought he was in a war zone because it started <laughs> firing at him. My ears were literally <laughs> ringing for the rest of the day. After yeah. That. It was so, right up against a concrete wall, so yep. it was just like all the sound directly into my brain. Yeah. So that, that's the main thing that we had, the initial startup issues. Now, anybody that's watches me like, man, you always have problems getting things started up. Well, not always, um, but on that, occasion. That Buick fired up. Yeah. On occasion, show. we have some issues, and, and that's, it's usually timing related, and that's, well, that's what this one was. Um, you know, fancy spark plugs. Jordan only got lit up one time by holding on to him, checking for sparks. Ooh, so that twice. Wasn't... You got him oh, twice. Oh, twice. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. um, so, yeah, so that's the, the general end of, of, of things. And now, I mean, it, it runs very well. What happened to our other thing? Was that off of another car? What other thing? This used to be silver. Now it's black. No, this is the, this is the one we had. This is the one that's coated from uh, Cerakote. Oh, gotcha. So I'm West Michigan Cerakote. So this, so truly the idea, this is the heater box. Um, now in stock form, you can see on this side, there's a weld nut. On the inside, there's literally a flapper that you would move open or closed. And as air comes through the radiator, comes through this um, snout, goes across that radiator of the heater or the exhaust manifold, and then blows hot air up into the, into the cab. And it truly, it does work very well. Now, on our end of things, the heat tends to go right straight back out, but at least your feet are warm for a while, if you need heat. Um, why don't we fire it up? Okay. And if we want to let it run or whatever we can, yeah. uh, and then we can start answering some questions. Yep, okay. Look at that. Just like it's supposed to. Now, you've been watching live the whole time, so you know that there's no camera there's trickery no here. There's no trickery here. <laughs> Sounds good. I like the, uh, so, uh, so Model A's have, you advance the, the timing yourself. So when you, you know, you, had, you can change the advance and the idle. You want to go over Idle there. speed. I mean, it's it's really slick. If you've never driven one of these, it's it's a really a, 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 they're fun to do deal with. So over on this side, you have your idle control. You can bring your idle up, and it to some extent functions as a cruise control uh, because it holds that idle there. You also have a foot pedal, so you can idle this thing back down, and then here you can change the ignition timing and how, how much advance it has. So obviously as you're going down the highway, you want full advance, but like you can sit and idle them way down um, on, on 
non-full advance or, or we should do or, we need to do a how-to video on driving a model a probably on yeah. like driving a model t2 yep. yep no exactly and uh and of course it has a choke and you can adjust the uh, mixture on the on the fly so it's it's really it's i think it's a great car to learn really how a vehicle functions mm -hmm. because it is raw it's very hands-on. There's manual. zero. Yeah, everything is manual, um, not just the shifter. Um, and you have to double clutch because it's not synchronized. Well, you don't have to, I guess. But so cool. So yeah. So that's the uh, that's our Model A. All right. We got right. some questions. All right. Cool. All right. So let me. Which, uh, I'm gonna shut this back off. I'm most yeah. You can do that. Although it'll sit here and run and not overheat for days, so it's, it's pretty awesome. Okay, so our first question is, uh, what's the coating again called? So the coating that, that is on anything that's hot, I'll call it. So I put it on the intake manifold, which doesn't get hot, only the fact that it's surrounded by the exhaust manifold. So the intake, the exhaust, the um, heater box, and I will add we co also coated the brake drums. Uh, all four brake drums are coated in the same stuff, and it's called Cerakote. Um, it is uh, uh, West Michigan Cerakote. Um, it is a ceramic-based coating uh, that they apply and cure, and I, I honestly can't say enough about it. I, I've used it uh, myself the few, first few times to make sure I was happy with it, and, and it's exceeded my uh, expectations. Uh, in the past, I've used some different exhaust um, um, uh, coatings, you know, obviously the spray paint stuff, it holds on until it gets hot. Uh, grill paint, uh, uh, like barbecue grill paint kind of does the same thing. And I've also used like uh, exhaust manifold dressing. That does work fairly well, but it doesn't stay as, as well as the Cerakote has. And of course, you also have, you know, the other ceramic coats that have to be applied with heat and temperature and all that type of stuff. And that does fairly well, but it's not, it's really not as uh, economical as, as the Cerakote is. Uh, now, was the, did you say about the red stuff too? Cause that may have been. Oh yeah. And then the red that. stuff is, the red stuff is Gliptol. Um, and that is, um, I know the can that I have, I bought from um, Eastwood a long time ago. You buy a quart of it, it lasts you forever. So I think that can is probably 25 years old. And you can brush it on. It kind of self-levels. It doesn't typically matter if it has brush marks in it anyway, but it pretty well self-levels itself and uh, it makes for a good durable finish. The biggest thing on any finish is you have to have a clean, dry, oil-free, you know, um, not all cracked and, you know, rusty in that to, for it to bond really well. And you certainly want to make sure you're doing that on the inside of an engine. Um, so where's the hand crank? So next question. Where is the hand crank for the hole in the front of the grill at? Well, here's the hole, and the functional piece is on the front of the crankshaft. I do not have a hand crank. However, I do know that I've been told multiple times to wisely not wrap your thumb around the hand crank when you're cranking, because when it kicks when, I should say if, but most likely when it backfires, you will, it will kick back and it will most likely break your thumb. So you always do thumb up, palm, as far as pushing it. Don't think of it as grabbing it and, and spinning it. All right, um, <laughs> next question is, cool to see the Model A again, one of my favorites. Yes, that is our GTO Wrenchman. Oh, nice. Yes, Chris. It is good to see it as well, and you as, in, as well, and in, in, I love the security videos. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, next question is, uh, we have missed it, but why not some modern upgrades that are hidden? Petronics and similar functions. Um, I'll go back to the same debate relative to copper ga head gasket or the composite head gasket when it comes to Petronics or any version thereof that's electrical and eliminates your um, points function. Um, that is the you know, overall debate always, what one makes more sense. Um, I always, when, 
when I deliberate that point and I'm on the side of the electronic basis, I always get the, well, my points have never broken to the point, to, literally to the point where I can't get it home. I can always file it. I can always get it, make it work. There's some validity to that. Um, so from that end of things, we have left this point at, the, at this end. Now, where I really see where the difference is in points and going to electronics, and we saw it within a, uh, in the build for the, uh, the, the Ford 302, is points have its limitations relative to RPM. Uh, we could not get that motor to, to run over 4,500, if I remember mm -hmm. right, which is miserable. Um, as soon as we dropped in an MSD distributor with more modern um, uh, pickup points in there, uh, it ran to 6,000 like that. So there's a point, a time and place for it. I don't think the Model A is going to hit 6,000 RPM. And I'm going to tell you what, if it does, it's not going to be there for very long. And it won't matter what kind of ignition we have. Um, yes, so how much horsepower? I touched on that initially. All the horsepowers. <laughs> it's got more than a horse. We'll put it that way. Um, so in general, our quote unquote upgrades are, it has a B model um, camshaft uh, when it comes to performance. It has a B model camshaft. It has a high compression head and it has the counterweighted um, crankshaft and then of course the lightened flywheel. Uh, that is our performance upgrade. We did not change anything on the intake, nothing on the exhaust, obviously on the ignition side of things, and the carburetor is just brand new is all. Um, so we didn't change anything there. In stock form, we'd be at about, as again, as Henry advertised them, they were 40 horse, they're closer to, reality was closer to 35. Given um, some dyno results that we have looked at with the upgrades that we made, we are actually closer to 50, uh, probably more like 45, but 45, 50. So if doing that math real fast, that's about a 20% improvement. Um, not bad for just really a camshaft and a head. Um, so, but yes, it's a whopping 50, I get it. Um, <laughs> So, how many miles will the bottom end last before it needs a fresh again, refresh again? Um, I'm going to speculate with good oil and, you know, very um, good maintenance as far as how often you change the oil. And, of course, having a filter on the intake manifold will help. These do not have an oil filter, so your oil change frequency would need to be uh, I would say closer to probably a thousand miles. I think I would do opposed to 3,500. And I'm going to say you're going to be, as far as a total refresh, I'm going to speculate about 50,000. Um, that doesn't mean that nothing goes back in and that you don't change shims and to tighten up the bearing clearances, but I'm going to estimate right around 50,000. Um, so that's, that's where I would put that. Um, question, advice for working on a Chevy V8 small block Edelbrock. I'm not sure what all that means. Um, um, but the, my advice on that is we do have a video out there that we did a small block Chevy. We did put an Edelbrock in it with the top end kit and it performed very well. And, and if you have more detailed questions on that specifically, that's a little more, hey, this is what I'm asking, please send them in and we'll, well, I'll answer that. Uh, so, next question is, you bored it 30 over, did it make much of a difference performance-wise? No. Uh, really what it made a difference was is I could put it together with pistons I had available. Um, did we gain some displacement? Yes, on a V8 30 over typically gains five cubic inches, so just to divide that in half, we gained two and a half. Um, not a noticeable difference. In our end, we gained 20% horsepower. Maybe we got one out of that because of the uh, displacement. All right. Uh-oh. Chris. Back to Chris. Would you put an oil filter on this? All the old guys seem to say no. Uh, again, putting an air filter on it and filtering out basically the dust and the dirt coming in because if you notice, I mean, even though we don't have fenders on this and, and such, 
your air intake is down low. So any dust coming off the road just naturally that's going to even be just sucked up as you pass at a, at a speed will go right into the, into the intake through the engine and that would be worse than having no filter on the oil. Because if you think about your oil, it gets contaminated from um, basically your fuel where you get extra carbon in there and then anything that comes through the air intake. And when there's no filter on there, of course you gain that much more. <laughs> we're, we're by an airport, sorry. <laughs> that one o'clock flight's coming in. That's good news though. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't bother putting an air filter or an oil filter on it. Just change the oil. It's cheap, relatively speaking. Uh, also notice, and I will bring this up, we used Rotella T shell oil in this. Um, that is a higher zinc content oil uh, that we use the T1. That was what was recommended by um, Ron's machine shop. So that is what we used. And also, if you look at one of our live streams relative to talking with Shell and Pennzoil, is that that Rotella T has the extra zinc in it that everybody's always concerned with, with a flat tap of camshaft. And that's what we use from a break-in standpoint, and that's what we'll be running it um, forever. Uh, were you surprised as how many parts were readily available and decently priced? Actually, yes, I was. Uh, what, the one thing that really caught me by surprise was the fact that I could buy the, uh, the bell housing, the big piece of cast iron bell housing, was absolutely readily available. I had it in two days um, to my doorstep, and it's a phenomenal piece. Uh, the only real place we ran into an issue as far as parts availability was getting a standard size piston in the time frame we needed. I mean, we could have had them in a week and a half, but we couldn't have them the next day. So we grabbed what was on the shelf, uh, which happened to be a 30 over, and, and just made, the, made the, literally the cut, and, and it was no big deal. Oh, total on the rebuild for this. Uh, so money-wise, we are in the ballpark, and I can work it out 100%. We're in the ballpark, though, of about six grand, five, six grand to do this. this Not rebuild. including your labor. Well, yeah, not, not including yeah. my labor. Um, just just in, the, in the labor from the babbitting, from the, uh, all the machine work, basically, and, and then all the parts. Um, <laughs> will you ever show us what the Warren Babbitt looks like now? Great name. Warren too. in. Pop-Tart McJelly. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? That's a good point. Um, well, quite frankly... Not on this motor. I, I'm not going to pull the pan off and, hope and drop the mains giving any kind of crazy catastrophe. We could probably um, get a photo from however, Ron's. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll check with Ron's and see if they have anything that we can, uh, we can look at. But that's a great idea. What's it, how does it change? I, I, I get that. It makes, makes good sense. Um, when will you do a Dodge 230 Flathead L6? I'll tell you what. I will do a Dodge 230 Flathead L6 as soon as it rolls through that door. Um, <laughs> I'm not, uh, there's, well, I not, can only think of about two motors I have, I want nothing to do with. Um, and that's not one of them. <laughs> we're we we're basically, say? we are, as far as engines go, we have stuff that we, we have a list over on the wall of stuff that we're like interested in and want to do. And we want to continue doing interesting engines. Uh, it's just going to be a matter of, what we end up tracking down, what's cool from a backstory perspective, because mm -hmm. we enjoy that a lot as far as yeah. like pulling stuff out of the woods and all those sorts of things. So it's, it, it'll, we, we definitely read all of your comments on our videos and stuff. And, and suggestions for stuff to do. Yep, Absolutely. And, yep. and you know, we can, we can only do so many of these. We only have so much time to, to knock these out and do all the other stuff that we want to do. Um, but we, we do listen and, and we, we have a list and a lot of the engines mentioned um, in these comments have, have, are on that list and it's, we'll get to some eventually. I know we wanna do some Japanese stuff. Um, you know, I, I know while lots of people are big fans of American V8s, um, you know, there's definitely a whole other crowd that's into yep. different stuff. So we, we got plans to exactly. try and do some 
some stuff, yep. maybe try and do a rotary, who knows? Yep, and, and on that note, I mean, from my end of things, I appreciate all things mechanical. So it's always interesting to see how something was done and, and have appreciation strictly for the mechanical function and how one, one thing was done and, and it's never to say, oh, that was really stupid. Well, hold it, we have done that. There are some really stupid ways to do some things. Um, but so it's always interesting to see and try to understand why it was done one way versus another. So you line right. it up. What what are these two engines that you don't want anything? To oh, do I'm not. I, I'm <laughs> You're not, not going to offend anybody. I'm not going to say right now. <laughs> um, all right. So it, the next question is, is is good as well. So what would be the most extreme possible modification I can do to this Model A? Um, so as with any engine, we could certainly go through and and port the daylights out of the intake manifold. We can make some uh, changes relative to the exhaust. Uh, we could put it a, um, instead of an updraft carburetor, we could do a downdraft setup. And of course, there's always, you could put a little turbo on it. Uh, I'm not sure how much it would take. <laughs> um, you, could, you could throw nitrous at it. Um, you could, I've even seen some little superchargers, same function. You know, basically, any kind of forced induction will always make more power. How long will it take? for the connecting rods to exit the block is the wild card. <laughs> um, and of course, you quickly, so we've talked about some of this as well. Hey, let's do some upgrades, make some more power. Maybe let's take the Model A in general and put in a different motor and, mm -hmm. and all those types of things, a living project, right? We have our Pontiac Redline yeah. Rebuild sitting yeah, we got a 389 tri-power just waiting for something to do. Now, sure, the trick not? to all that would be not getting it in the hole because, well, we can make anything work with a torch. But you also start to get into the, you know, how well does this, you know, transmounted spring work? And then how fast do you outrun the brakes? And how fast do you outrun the steering and all that type of stuff? Uh, we have made vast improvements in the braking function um, from what we did when we brought it home. It, it actually stops now in the first. <laughs> Uh, 100 feet opposed to continuing for 300 feet. So that has been been good. Don't ask us how we know. Yeah. Uh, all right, next question is, what's next for the Swap the Street Model A? And will there ever be a Swap the another, will be a Swap the Street 3 is what he's swap getting Swap 3 at. Street. Wow, Swap 3 Street. Um, <laughs> is, uh, well, that's kind of up in the air. So, I would love to hear some suggestions of events to take this specific car as it sits today and participate in. Now we've talked about dirt drags, we've talked about race of gentlemen. Um, I, I've done the, um, uh, the great race. This would not perform well in the great race uh, from a, that type of thing. Uh, I think it would be fun to do some cruises like a coastal type of cruise because well, there's no top. I mean, it's fantastic for that. I would not want to be in a rainforest. Um, so that type of thing would be good. Um, but yet, yeah, I would love some suggestions because that is something that we've talked about is, all right, what's next? It's got to do something next. It can't just sit over here. It really doesn't make a great, I mean, actually, it does make a great lunch, go to get lunch in it. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make a good parked runner because, well, it's not a truck. So... And then, will there ever be a Swap the Street 3? Yeah, I guess you'll have to stay tuned. Um, all right. Tell me how many man hours you have into this project. Okay, so. Are we talking purely build or? <laughs> so, I have probably, well, let's see, on a filming standpoint. Four, we, four or five, probably. We put, what, four days in? filming to put it back together i think we yeah had well tear days. down was probably two days yeah two days tear down four days putting it back together two days, two down, days down there um so we're up to eight and i had probably another week yeah just getting all the yeah uh parts cleaned up yep you know just general stuff yeah sandblasting yeah. and yeah. and finding parts and inspecting parts yeah. and running stuff places and getting stuff mailed out and yeah. all the little just tidbit stuff that yeah, adds so up. so call it, uh, I mean, unless you're my boss asking me how to justify my time, call it about 100 hours, I would say overall. So two and a half weeks. And then another 100 when you go. 
Oh yeah, and then yeah, yeah. When we built the truck, yeah, we built the whole car in four days uh, initially. <laughs> so it, I guess it took a lot longer to do it, the motor right. Um, but yeah, will it drift? It will certainly drift on loose gravel, sand, and snow. Pavement if it's really wet <laughs> or, um, or oily. Yeah. Now, if you're familiar with the model Model A at all in the rear and how the uh, wheel or the hubs are are um, um, pinned to the axle, and it's a it's a press fit with a keyway. Uh, you don't want to do a whole lot of that because they will they break fairly quickly, and a banjo is terrible. All right, what type of gasoline do you use? We use real gas, uh, none of the powdered stuff. Uh, yes, it has ethanol content in it. Uh, do I use stabilizer? No, uh, not at this point. Now, the only time I use stabilizer is when I am going to have gas in a can for a long time, and that is kind of about it. Um, otherwise, basically changing the jets, making sure you have rubber components in there that are, are uh, you know, work with the ethanol is the key to any of that. And quite frankly, drive the car. Um, a car that sits does not, they don't last real well on a shelf. So my advice is drive it run fluid through it, get tires dirty, get the sides dirty, <laughs> have fun, enjoy it. It ain't worth a darn sitting on the couch. So with that, we're going to wrap this up. Um, ben, do you have any more questions about what we did? No, you right. answered all my questions. Good. So if you have any more questions, please submit them. We will answer them. And if you have any suggestions relative to what our next project should be, so on and so forth, please send them in as well. Most importantly, Ben and I both have kids that like to eat, so please subscribe. <laughs> it makes everybody happy. And besides that, you spread the fact that we all like vehicles, whether they're two-wheel, four-wheel tracks. That would be cool. Yeah. We could do a track vehicle. Well, we you know what would be really sweet? We should find one of, one of those old um, like yeah. snow cats. Yeah, that sounds good. I like yeah. that. So if anybody's got a snow cat out there, let us know where it's at, and uh, we would love to do that. That sounds like a good winter project. I like that. I like <laughs> well, that. it would be a better summer project and then drive it right, in the winter. Right. Oh, uh, so with that, we are signing off. Again, thank you very much for, for uh, coming in live with us here and coming into the backstage, if you will, of our world. And hopefully we didn't bore you to tears. And you'll be back next time after you subscribe and you'll get those notifications. So get back into the garage, get your work done, and get back out on the road having fun. See ya. See ya.